Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Um, good melodies are often supported by what we call diatonic chords, chords from a simple scale, and they can sound great, but you've all heard it, that beautiful, familiar, soaring melody somehow transformed by a surprising chord or two or more. Let's look at that today. Well, I get questions about this all the time. How do you, this is essentially what jazz musicians call reharmonize a melody. Well, there's a number of ways to do it. I'll tell you what, listen to this. This is a simple melody, all white keys, and chords also taken from white keys on the piano. I mean the key of C major. The progression is C, E minor, A minor, D minor. Now, the question is, can that same melody be reharmonized with surprising chords? The answer is yes. We'll start in C, but then what's going to happen? Just listen. Well, to my ear, the first example, the diatonic melody with diatonic chords, sounds like it would fit nicely into a Hallmark movie. But the second example creates a good amount of tension and excitement. It's better for epic music. And there's a reason for it. When chords surprise us, they give us an emotional perspective that's different from anything else, right? It carries a message. Now, it's important to notice the melody hasn't changed. One more time, let's listen to the plain Jane one. The melody's on the major seventh, and then it's on the fifth of E minor. It's on the third of A minor. It's on the root of D minor a little flip down to the seventh, going down to the third of E minor, up to the root of A, walking down to the third of D minor. Now, composers should be aware of where in the chord the melody lives. Let's look at what I did in the second example. The first beat I let it be a C chord because I want to establish the listener's frame of reference. C major. It's exactly the same. Now, I looked at that next melodic tone. It's the same melodic tone from the first phrase. It's a B. In the first example, it was the fifth of E minor. Diatonic chord. But here, you can see, looking at the root, it's G sharp. I let the first chord be C, G sharp minor. Now, I'll tell you, G sharp minor is not related to C major in any way. You could make an argument that it's related by uh, modal interchange with the harmonic minor of C, but the spelling would be off. I'm thinking of this as G sharp minor, and they're unrelated, and yet the B is the minor third. So there's something that's really satisfying about the relationship chromatic median, and then another descent of a third. All right, so here's a C, and that C is the fifth of F minor. G sharp minor gave way to F minor, another pair of chords that don't exist in any key signature. And yet the melody is diatonic to the key of C. C major. G sharp minor, very dark. F minor, also very dark. 
I love that brilliant moment. Do you see the D in the bass? It's right here. And it resolves to D major. The F sharp gives us that kind of like sort of brilliance. We've functionally speaking sort of modulated. Going to the tonic melodically really feels like we've now ascended a step. And in fact, that's what the melody did, didn't it? Okay, let's go on. The same phrase, turning around down, is going to head to a B. And I've decided to let that B be the ninth of my A minor chord that's next. Yeah. And then a tritone root change, and that's a very strong change, but it makes plenty of sense. The A is sort of a Lydian tone to the E flat major, and then the G, the major third. I'm looking at each melodic tone and saying to myself, could it be the root third or fifth of a chord, or even perhaps more interestingly, could it be a seventh or a ninth? Well, I'm actually very happy with that interchange as well. It's surprising. Anytime your root motion is uh, a tritone like that, I mean, first of all, it's something they tell you don't do unless you have to, but it's really satisfying. A minor. Everything's turned upside down. And while it's turned upside down, I went from E flat major to B flat major. That's a very, very sort of simple relationship between those two chords. You can hear it happening. It's B flat major seven though for a little spice because the melodic tone A is the major seventh. Let's finish it up. A minor, E flat major, B flat major seven. And for fun, I let it resolve back to D minor because maybe it loops, maybe it goes back to C. I like my second harmonization better, and I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. Ding the bell, you'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time.